Hey everyone, Tio here. In today's video, I'm reviewing the Huion Canvas Slate 10, which is a 10.1 inch Android tablet with pen support. So this tablet was released in December 2023. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the pen performance, the drawing experience, whether this tablet is worth the money and who this tablet is for. Now this video is going to be a bit long. So if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written. The link is in the video description below. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by the company. And the official retail price for this tablet is US $249 on Huion's online store. And at the time of making this video, it's $229 on Amazon USA. All right, let me give you the bottom line up front. Design of this tablet looks kind of generic, but looks good enough. Build quality is solid. Overall performance is smooth enough, but there are some issues which I will talk more about later. And that noise is coming from workers tearing down the bandages up there. I thought I found the perfect quiet place this early Sunday morning to record my review, but I'm not so lucky. So let me switch to a new location. Let's go over to the National Museum of Singapore and hope it's more quiet over there. Let's talk about pen performance. There is slight jitter and wobble when drawing slow diagonal lines, which is to say this tablet is not good enough for professional illustration, but for casual drawing and sketching, it's gonna work fine. And I'll show you that later on. And Huion actually says this tablet is targeted at beginners and kids. Battery life is about five to six hours, but battery life really varies depending on brightness. The tablet comes with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage and there is micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Now the things that I don't like about this tablet are there is no biometric unlock so you cannot use your fingerprint or face unlock with this tablet. The auto brightness doesn't work that well. It's always too dim for my personal liking and of course the speakers um, they are not that loud. So is this tablet worth the money? For kids, I would say yes, because kids will be happy with any tablet. For beginners, maybe. And you can decide based on the performance you will see later. For professional illustrators, no. If you only have a budget of 200 to 250 US dollars and you want a portable tablet with pen support, there are actually not many options out there. The only tablet that I know of that has better pen performance than this Huion Canvas Slate 10 is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite 2022. And that tablet has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. And that tablet currently is selling at 199 US dollars on Amazon USA. This tablet looks and feels like a white label product to me because the features and design are not too different from other Android tablets that I have seen. It's just that this tablet is so under the Huion brand. Now I don't actually have any issues with white label products as long as the product works and we will see how well it works later on. So let's move on to the full review. Let's look at the items included with the purchase. Inside the box, there is a flip case, which I have already installed. The texture looks and feels like canvas, and this should be water resistant, but not waterproof. User guide, USB-A to USB-C charging cable, USB-A charger, a SIM ejection tool, and one replacement pen tip, the tablet, and the pen. Weight of this tablet is 575 grams without the case and the pen. So with the case, obviously the tablet is heavier. It's actually heavier than what I would have preferred. So whenever I'm sketching outdoors, I will have to set this tablet down on a table, on my lap or on some sort of surface. Now if you fold the case to the back like this, you can actually have this pen holder attached magnetically to the back. If you want to prop up the tablet, you can do so this way. If you want to prop up the tablet at a comfortable angle for drawing, you can fold it this way. And this pen holder, I would say, is tight enough so that the pen will not slip out accidentally. Anyway, you can just close the cover and use the flap here to prevent the pen from falling out. This is the Huion HS200 pen, which uses USI protocol. So this pen can be used with certain models of Chromebook as well. 
This pen is powered by battery, so charging is required, and that's the USB-C charging port. The pen supports pump rejection, tilt, and slightly over 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. There are two side buttons, and the shortcuts will vary depending on the drawing app you use. The pen tip is considered firm, but if you press down much harder, you will still see some movement. Overall build quality for the pen is pretty solid. This is 15 grams, so it's lightweight, and this is quite comfortable to hold with the matte textured surface and the larger, but not too thick, diameter. There is no eraser at the back. It's so difficult to review this tablet outdoors because of the very reflective display. The design of this tablet looks alright. The design actually looks kind of generic. So this tablet looks and feels like a white label product to me. It's just that this is so under the Huion's brand. Build quality is solid. Now there is no screen protector applied, so I'm not sure if a screen protector is necessary for a tablet at this price category. So on the left side, there is the power button with no fingerprint scanner, the volume control, one speaker here and another speaker on the other side. So you get stereo speakers. The volume is loud enough for indoor use but not for outdoor use. That's a USB C port with USB 2 transfer speeds, the micro SD card slot, 3.5mm audio jack, that's the front facing camera but it does not support face unlock, and connectors for keyboard which is not available from Kukuyon. This tablet has a 10.1 inch IPS LCD display, resolution is 1920 by 1200 the visuals look sharp enough to me. The colors look alright, but definitely not as vibrant compared to 100% sRGB display. So the colors here look slightly washed out compared to higher end tablets that I have reviewed before. But overall, I would say the color quality or the display quality is pretty decent. The brightness is good enough for indoor use, but not for outdoor use. So right now, I actually have the tablet at maximum brightness. There is auto brightness, but for some reason, the auto brightness is always dimmer than what I would prefer. This tablet uses the Unisoc T616 processor, which to me is the low to mid range processor, but still good enough for drawing purposes. The tablet runs on Android 12 and this comes with 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage. So this is how fast the apps can launch. And I would say the apps are able to launch pretty quickly. Not as fast compared to more expensive tablets, but this is pretty fast. So this is Chrome web browser, and this is the text review that I have already written. Scrolling is smooth enough. There is 128 gigs of internal storage, and there is the micro SD card slot, so you don't have to worry about the lack of storage. And the stock Android 12 UI actually doesn't look that good and does not have much features. So this UI that you are looking at right now is actually from Nova Launcher. So this gives me more feature and more customization for the look. The one issue that I noticed with regards to performance is when I play videos using the YouTube app, sometimes there is that split second delay and audio will desync. So that's an issue with the YouTube app. It happens quite often, but less often when you are playing YouTube videos from the web browser, but it still happens. So that is um, quite annoying when it happens. And that's the only performance issue that I experience. This tablet is not meant for gaming, so if you do want to play games, don't expect to play games at the highest frame rates or with the highest image quality. Let's look at pen performance. So this align test created with the app Midibank Paint. And these are the slow diagonal lines. And as you can see, there is slight wobble or jitter. If you draw fast, the lines will be straight. But if you draw slowly, 
the lines will have slight jitter and wobble. Initial activation force I would say is low enough but uh, I need to talk more about that later. So this is how the lines taper and they taper very smoothly and sharply which is nice. So this is the real test for pressure sensitivity and here you can see the transition from thin to thick is kind of smooth but I have a problem with uh, initial activation force. So let me choose a brush size uh, maybe 20 plus pixels. So I can start with thin lines, thick lines and when I try to draw the thin lines again, it's very difficult for me to draw the thin lines uh, from the start. So let me try again. Thin, thick, and thin. So this means the pen is not able to detect minimal changes in pressure when drawn with minimal pressure because a really sensitive pen will be able to draw extremely thin lines here, thick lines and extremely thin lines and this pen is not able to do that. So um, this pen is not that sensitive, right? Which is to say that if you choose a thick brush for drawing and you want to draw thin lines, you will have to adjust the brush size to get those those thinner lines. You can't just rely on the pressure sensitivity of the pen. You actually have to go adjust the brush settings and it's quite inconvenient compared to using a really sensitive pen for drawing where you can just use that single thick brush to complete your illustration. So this is the test for line consistency and I am able to draw lines with consistent width by applying consistent pressure. And this is also a diagonal line, so you can see slight diagonal line wobble and jitter here. This is not pressure wobble or jitter, this is actually due to the diagonal line wobble or jitter. Dots can be drawn easily by tapping on the display. And this is how I usually test for cursor misalignment. I usually draw separate lines and try to join them to see whether I can join the lines properly without the lines overshooting or without leaving gaps. And the cursor for this pen is always directly beneath the pen tip regardless of how you hold the pen. So this pen does not have any issue with cursor misalignment. And also there is palm rejection so you can actually place your palm on the display or rest your palm on the display while you draw. And this is where the lack of pressure sensitivity uh, really affects drawing because I'm drawing this box with thick lines right now but if I want to draw the thin lines um, it's not that easy. So when you can only draw with um, lines that don't vary too much in thickness so for example when I'm drawing this, uh, the line is usually just thick. There is no character to the line because the line is always thick. There is no thin and thick uh, lines. Yeah, so that's the limitation with this pen even though it's said to support 4000 over levels of pressure sensitivity. And this app is Infinite Painter which is not the ideal app for drawing because there are some pen performance issues and latency. So if you take a look at the tapered strokes that I am drawing, you can see the shoelace effect. So the lines actually taper very abruptly. So this is obviously not good and not great for accuracy. Sketchbook also has the shoelace effect with tapering strokes. Latency with Infinite Painter is quite noticeable. Clip Studio Paint has good pen performance, slightly less latency than Infinite Painter. Medibank Paint has good pen performance but more latency. Latency performance with Concepts is the best among the drawing apps I've tested but there is still slight latency. I'm making this review outdoors because I'm still in the midst of moving house and there will be several months of renovation. So just be prepared for more reviews outdoors.
Okay, let me um, go show you the go talk about the actual drawing experience while I sketch outside. So I just went for lunch and the best sitting location for sketching this museum, which is there behind my back, was taken up by someone. And I can sketch here um, because when it comes to sketching on location, you don't have to draw things that actually block your view. And there are two plotted plants that blocking my view. So this is the scene that I will sketch and thankfully there's this huge tree I decide to provide shade because it's really hot outside here right now. I have to give a shout out to reviewers who make their product reviews outdoors such as Michael Fisher, Ben's Gadget Review and others because it is not easy to make product reviews outdoors. All right, let's draw. This app is Infinite Painter. And I'm going to choose the dry ink brush. I'm going to set the smoothness down all the way to zero so that you can see whether or not diagonal line wobble or jitter can actually affect the drawing. So as mentioned earlier, this tablet is I would say good enough for casual drawing. It's good for kids because kids are not going to know what's a good drawing tablet or a lousy drawing tablet. Okay, so I'm actually using a thin brush which allows me to draw the thin lines easily. Because if I choose a thick brush, then it's going to be quite difficult to use pressure sensitivity to draw the thin lines. Latency is more of an issue compared to the diagonal line wobble. Because for quick sketches, um, diagonal lines are usually straight enough. But when you want to draw with accuracy, sometimes you may want to you know, slow down and draw. That is when you will be affected by diagonal line wall. So this tablet is not going to be good for you know, professional illustration. Even as I draw the dots to represent the window panes right now, I can see the know the latency so if your artwork requires uh, hatching or cross hatching uh, you will really have to get used to uh, latency infinite painter actually allows you to customize the side button um, or you can disable the side button if you want to I personally prefer to use the buttons on the display Okay, I accidentally pressed the side button and now I switched to the eraser mode. So I have to use the switch to brush mode again. So even though Infinite Painter is not the best um, app to use on this tablet, I'm using it because I'm quite familiar with this app. The better app to use is Clip Studio Paint, but I don't have the Clip Studio Paint license. Because CSP license is tied to the device, it's not tied to the login and password. Palm rejection works quite well. Uh, I have no issues resting my palm on the display. And you will definitely need to rest your palm on the display um, to draw more accurately. Let me just draw the dots here. So once you know the limitation of this tablet, which is um, the lack of pressure sensitivity, more specifically, the tablet has problem detecting minimal pressure you can work around that by choosing thinner brush to draw with and the other issue is of course uh, latency sorry yeah latency is an issue the latency doesn't affect accuracy but line jitter diagonal line jitter affects accuracy so to overcome diagonal line jitter you have to you know, sketch much faster Oh, another thing I for, almost forgot to mention is the display is glossy and the display is quite slippery. So there is almost no friction when you are drawing with the pen. So the pen tip actually glides around quite easily. So that means uh, it's kind of difficult to control the pen at times, which means um, again, that's going to affect accuracy. You can apply uh, you can choose to apply a matte screen protector on this tablet but the matte screen protector will uh, create this haze, this white haze 
when you are when there's light source when there are reflections on the display if you're using this tablet mostly at home um, you can use a matte screen protector it's not too bad but if you use a matte screen protector like where i am right now outdoors um, the anti-glare diffusion is going to make the screen uh, very bright and glaring so that is going to be quite uncomfortable for your eyes the response time of this tablet is 25 milliseconds 25 milliseconds is considered slow the premium pen displays usually have response times of 15 to 25 so the good pen displays will have maybe 15 milliseconds response time and the slower pen displays will have 25 milliseconds response time tablets such as the ipad pros uh, samsung galaxy tab are uh, the more expensive ones uh, they have response time of less than 10 milliseconds so any any response time less than 10 milliseconds is good 15 is all right 25 is on the slower side if you really want the accuracy um, but you don't necessarily need to you know uh, you don't necessarily need portability just go with pen displays so as you can see this quick sketch is not really affected by diagonal line jitter even though i have actually set the smoothness all the way down to zero percent the tablet has 8 gigs of RAM, so you can handle multitasking and I'll say uh, art works with many layers. As to how many layers, that I cannot say for sure. Alright, so this is, I would say, the quick sketch. It's not very detailed because I'm trying to you know, sketch this as fast as I can. For the next sketch, I'm going to draw this scene behind me. This scene is, I would say, easier to draw compared to the earlier scene because it's a straight-on scene without much or many diagonal lines compared to this scene where there are diagonal lines where I can test the line jitter. But for this, I'm going to use the app Concepts. So this app is Concepts, which is one of my favorite illustration apps. So I'm using the soft pencil brush. So let's draw the top. This brush does not have any smoothing. Yeah, so the lines look kind of straight to me. So that's the roof. And this app is like way more responsive compared to Infinite Painter. Yeah, so this app is actually pretty good for quick sketching. Okay, I definitely have a much easier time using these app concepts because uh, it's just much faster. Latency is not really that much of a problem here with this app. The tablet will get hot um, at the top left area near to the, nearer to the power and volume controls. But since my palm is not resting at that area, it doesn't really matter. So this pencil brush um, has tilt as well. So let me try and tilt the pencil brush so that you can see how tilt works. And it doesn't work that great. So tilt sensitivity isn't that um, sensitive. Concepts is a very forgiving app, even if you use a pen with so-so um, tilt support, however, less than ideal pressure support. Concepts is a very forgiving app. You can use Concepts with a pen that does not support pressure or tilt as well, and it will still work well. So the more responsive the app is, the better the drawing experience. Right now, I'm seated under the shade. So the tablet, I would say, is bright enough for use under the shade, but not if you are directly under the sun. Try not to draw with this tablet if you are directly under the sun if you're under the shade it's all right so this tablet is definitely good enough for quick sketching which is what i'm doing so uh, right now and cursor tracking is accurate regardless of how you hold the pen regardless of the angle of the pen 
By the way, I have a few tutorials on using concepts, free tutorials on my YouTube channel. You can just search for concepts, uh, drawing tips, or tutorials, and you will be able to see uh, the tutorials that I've created over the years for this app. Okay, so this is how, this is how the sketch looks. Okay, I'm using the tilt brush to color the big areas. So I, when I tilt the pen, I can get the broad strokes, but unfortunately, as mentioned earlier, tilt doesn't work that well. So even when I tilt the pen right now, I cannot get the broad, the really broad strokes. Another issue that I notice is sometimes when I tap uh, with the pen to select stuff, I have to tap a second time because uh, for some reason, the first time, it doesn't register the tap. Yep, I tried to switch over to the brown brush. Uh, when I tried to switch, I had to tap twice. It's kind of annoying, but it's not as annoying compared to the latency that I experienced with Infinite Painter. You may also notice that um, it's starting to get really noisy here. The traffic seems to be picking up. Okay, uh, when I zoom in and out, the speed is okay. Right, so this is the well, was a completed sketch. I shall stop here. Right to conclude, is this worth the money? Um, if you're buying this tablet. For kids, I would say it's still worth the money because as mentioned several times, uh, kids will just enjoy any tablet. Now, if you are a beginner, you have to take note of the limitations for the pen performance and also for the performance with various drawing apps. I wasn't able to test like all the drawing apps, but uh, for the drawing apps that I've tested, the ones that perform better on this tablet would be Midibank Paint, Clip Studio, Concepts, the apps that have noticeable latency would be Infinite Painter, High Paint, Sketchbook, and for the lines that taper with the shoelace effect, Infinite Painter, Sketchbook. Yeah, so if you use any of those drawing apps as your main drawing apps and there are issues, then perhaps don't get this tablet. For professional illustrators, um, you can avoid this because the pen accuracy is not suitable for professional illustrations. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this tablet. Would you be interested in something like this, a product like this, at this price point?